Rachel here, and I cannot believe the prices I was quoted, and I'm not ready to commit to a 3D printer, so we're gonna do... The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. In order to make our own terrain roller, we need to start with a handle core. I got this guy from the dollar store. It's a decently thick cylinder without any coating, so it'll be oven safe. I cut it down to five inch sections, but you might benefit from not cutting it just yet. I'll show you why later. I intend to use my roller heavily with water, so paper clay is out of the question for me. Luckily, polymer clay is plastic based and therefore waterproof, so I'm using Sculpey, but any polymer clay should work. I roll out my clay to be at least five inches long and wide enough to wrap around my handle with overlap. If you're using a pasta roller, put it at its largest setting. My clay is about two millimeters thick. Place on parchment or wax paper. Then we carefully select some rocks. Too big, too small, just right. I looked specifically for rocks that had more distinct edges and angular sides because the definition of the triangles and rectangles will help our puzzle fitting wall design. I just found these by taking a walk around my neighborhood. Make sure to wash your rocks as well so they don't leave sand granules in the clay. Do this in a container so you can dump the water outside rather than down your pipes. Now we're ready to stamp. I start with whichever piece I want, and then find other pieces with sides that match in length. And as I keep going, I try to leave spaces that I'm confident I can fill with other rocks in the library. I quite enjoyed this process because it's kind of like doing a puzzle, finding which rock shape will fit nicely in which spaces. A couple of tips to help you along. Start with the larger shapes, and then fill in the spaces in between with your smaller rocks. If you can't find the exact rock to fit, you can always combine a couple of different rocks to make precisely the shape you need. If you find the rocks stick, someone commented that you can sprinkle a tad bit of cornstarch to reduce the tackiness. When pressing down, make sure to leave a clear and deep impression without puncturing the clay all the way through. Practice on some scrap clay if you need to. And you can always double back and push on certain corners if the impression isn't as clear or deep as you'd like. I did a whole roller before realizing my clay was too thin and therefore my impressions too shallow. It didn't turn out horrible, but you can really see the difference when I rolled out my tiles. When you've covered enough of the clay to almost wrap around the handle, we're ready for the next step. I trim down the wraparound edges and thin them out, leaving just enough space for the overlap. I had to measure this a couple of times to get the sizing right. Just be gentle when touching the imprinted side so you don't disturb the work you've already done. Also, you can do all the trimming before you do the stone impressions. That actually, that would make things easier. Yeah. Now here's where we get a little tricky. Gently wrap your clay around your handle and use a tool to score it together. Be very, very careful not to grasp tightly where your clay is. And here's where it actually might serve you to leave your handle long so you have extra room to grip as you work. Either way, once you've finished combining the wraparound edges, we go to complete our design with the last of our puzzle piece fitting. Again, this part is tricky because you're looking to match your rock pieces on more than one or two sides now. I found it easier to use our technique from before, pushing parts of a rock face down in order to sort of draw in a custom rock shape. You will notice that your clay will stretch around the handle a bit, and that's okay, we'll fix it later. Once completed, admire your work. Then we pop it in the oven to bake as directed on the label. It's very important to put your roller in a way where the clay itself isn't touching the pan or tray. I cut my handle smoothly enough to put it in the oven upright, but if you leave your handle long, you can probably prop it on the edges of a baking pan so the rock impressions hover above. Here, exercising your free wills is needed to decide... How do I want to do this? Yeah! This was my first attempt. After baking, I capped off both ends with a two-part epoxy putty. For my second attempt, I actually used excess polymer clay to cap off one end before I baked it. Or after baking, you could in theory ditch the wood handle altogether and use it hollow with any other handle or roller. To fit tightly, I wedged in the wood handle with a paper towel cushion because the clay had become loose after the last set of rock impressions. This suits my purposes because I'm quite careful with the roller and I don't fully immerse it in the water. 
Now I'm choosing to roll out my walls with silicone because I like how quickly it dries, it adheres directly to the foam without warping it, and it's a fairly cheap option. One $7 tube has lasted me 30 tiles and counting. If you want to see the process of using air dry clear polymer clay though, you can check out my sidewalks video linked in the description. I made walls that are two and three grid squares long, measurements on screen. Now I work with a one and a quarter inch grid system, but I decided to make all my heights match a one inch grid system. So all my walls are two inches tall. My tree trunks are four inches tall. My desert scatter pieces are one, two and three inches tall. I'll tell you why in a future wall specific video because that'll give me enough time to bullsh- Anyway, here's a diagram of the dimensions and magnet placements I used. Once again, you don't need much silicone. Roll slowly. Rinse carefully. Wipe thoroughly. Any silicone that stays in the deep crevices is actually helpful for future preservation. Also, to reduce silicone waste, I used the next wall piece as the plopping grounds when clearing up the sides of the current wall. Just make sure you let excess water drip off somewhere else first. If you want to see this process in detail, check out my Rhodes video. Also, don't wash silicone down the drain. It will never leave your pipes. Go outside and pour it over some rocks or something. I let these dry overnight and then repeated the silicone on the other side in the morning. Then by the evening, they were ready to paint. You can also trim down any silicone jutting out on the sides that you might have missed. And this is where we really get to see these rock walls come to life. I start by base coating with a half matte Mod Podge, half gray acrylic mix. Then I coat in just gray acrylic. Then to give the natural variations of color through the stone, I dry brush with a small makeup brush, pockets of tan, golden brown, and brown. The way I dry brush is to dampen the brush just a tiny bit, either using a sponge or a drop of water so that it feels barely moist on my hand. Then I touch it to the paint color I want and twirl and brush against my homemade Old Spruce Glue to Cork Trivet Texture Palette. I once again test it on the back of my hand to make sure the paint is barely visible before dry brushing the rocks in every which way. In between colors, I dampen the brush again and use the trivet and paper towel to clean. Once you've gone through all your colors, absolutely slather on a dark wash. The recipe I'm using here is from RP Archive, who I think made it based on Black Magic Craft. I'll link his video for the recipe because I made this over a year ago and I can't remember what's in it. Coat your wall to the point where you see distinct channels from the black wash buildup. I emphasize them even more by soaking up the black wash away from some divots in the rocks and adding more black wash between some of the rocks. It was an incredibly satisfying process. Leave them for several hours to dry completely before the final dry brush coating. I wanted these walls to have a warmer feel to them, so I used tan paint here. Use the same techniques as before, but with a bigger brush and only swiping across the rocks. This will help to only hit the edges and the most raised parts. If you're really picky, you can also wipe away any unintended highlights you created along the edges of the wall. What other textures can you think to make into a roll? 